So we will start. Okay, ready. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so I'm gonna ask you a question. So what is the most significant risk factor for osteoporosis? Osteoporosis. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah, like uh, alcohol is, is a really strong factor for osteoporosis. That's uh, an important point. Okay, so twenty. If you are a really, 20, yeah, yeah. So uh, if yeah. okay, not 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 BMI yeah. or those yeah. things. Alcohol. Yeah, yeah, alcohol. Yeah. So, yeah, the if you are a twenty-one year old girl, uh, who's a twenty-six week gestation, and then I check your urine, I find. 10,000 colony forming unit of E. coli. So mm -hmm. what you, what's your complication? Oh, it can also cause preterm. Excellent, yeah, it can cause pyelonephritis. Mm -hmm. Perfect, okay. So if you are a 28 year old woman who present with intermittent episode of uh, abdominal pain, radiate to the groin area. So what do you think is going on with you and what should I order now? The 28 year old? Mm-hmm. Yeah. With a terminal abdominal pain. Abdominal pain is just vague. In, there is in, no in, place. Yeah, it in, just in, radiates to the groin. Intermittent abdominal pain radiating to the groin. And moderate flank percussion tenderness. Yeah, it can be stone. Yeah, so you order ultrasound of the kidney and pelvis. Perfect. Right. Okay. Period. Next case. So, if you are a 28-year-old woman at a 30-week gestation... And you came due to vaginal bleeding. <clears throat> I check your blood pressure. I find a 95 over 65. Pulse is 116. I check your abdomen. I find abdominal tenderness and cool extremity. And the fetal heart monitoring shows contraction every 5 minutes. So what should I do for you now? What's going on with you? How many? Yeah, so we will do... IV fluid and then place the patient in the left lateral decubitus position mm -hmm. and then deliver. Yeah, yeah, excellent. That's uh, perfect. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, so what we'll try to do as much cases as we can in uh, an hour and then we take 10 minutes rest and then we come back for an hour for three hours like this. Okay. Three hours? Yeah, yeah. Like 10 I minutes thought rest. you said two hours. Yeah, so if you are a 24 year old woman. Uh, who has and you did not have a period yet, and you you telling me that you have a breast soreness, nausea, and fatigue. Okay, you have you didn't have a period for two months, and you have breast soreness and nausea. What do you think is going on with you? Um. Yeah, excellent. Most likely pregnancy. So we do pregnancy test. Perfect. Period. Now, if you are a 39-year-old woman, okay, and uh, you presented at a 37-week gestation with a bright red vaginal bleeding uh, that began shortly after sexual intercourse, mm -hmm. when I check your uh, ultrasound, I see placental tissue over the internal cervical os and uh, contraction every three minutes. What do you think should I do right now? Um, okay. When you check and you see, um, what do you see when you check? Hmm? Yeah, I find Say the when you do, placental uh, tissue over the internal cervical os. Okay. Yeah. So it can be two things, you know, if the, you check and you see the uh, placenta covering the cervical os, it can be placenta previa. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Very, so yeah. yeah, placenta previa. So I manage it with C-section here. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, the best treatment for uh, placenta previa. Okay. So now you have another case. You have a patient who's a thirty-nine year old woman with a thirty-four, thirty-five week gestation who present with intense, constant, lower abdominal pain, and she had a myomectomy during which six fibroids were removed. Like, so you mm -hmm. can imagine what myomectomy is there. Mm -hmm. Now she have contraction every two to three minutes that lasts for 45 seconds. 
and the heart rate shows 140 of the baby mm -hmm. with moderate variability and you have persistent variable deceleration to 90 so what should you do right now I'm thinking this is uterian eruption excellent because of the history of myomectomy excellent good job so you do laparotomy and delivery yeah. right Okay, so if you are a 25-year-old woman who present with acute severe abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding and uh, you are at 32 weeks gestation now, your uh, ultrasound showed intramural fibroid. Okay, but now when I examine you, I find firm tender uterus. And the mm -hmm. cervix is 2 cm dilated. And mm -hmm. fetal heart rate is 150. So what do you think is going on with you? You think it's chorea? Hmm? Yeah, so this one, abdominal pain with vaginal bleeding at 32 oh, weeks gestation. bleeding. Yeah. So thought trimester bleeding. Yeah, so it's most likely a propsia placenty. Okay, placent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we have because you didn't uh, tell me if there was any fever or anything like that. Okay. Yeah, we have different types of acute vaginal antepartum bleeding. We have mm -hmm. if uh, we if I tell you the bleeding is intermittent with intermittent pain with contraction and small amount of blood, think the mucus, blood issue. What is that? Okay, that's say it normal. again. If you tell. Yeah, that's a normal labor. You can have that. Mm -hmm. While if I tell you sudden vaginal bleeding, abdominal pain, and tender uterus, tachycystole, mm -hmm. frequent mm -hmm. uterine contraction, that's a placental abruption. But if I tell you painless vaginal bleeding, ultrasound mm -hmm. with a placenta covering cervical os, that's a placenta yeah. preview. Preview. Mm -hmm. But if I tell you sudden ab onset vaginal bleeding, constant abdominal pain, uh, cessation of uter uterine contraction, Loss of fetal station, fetal rupture. deterioration. Ah, mm -hmm. excellent, good job. So, how about if I tell you this is rupture? You turn up. How about I tell you painless vaginal bleeding that occur with rupture of membrane, fetal deterioration, and sinusoidal tracing of or bradycardia? Oh, vasa preview. Excellent, yeah, vasa preview. So if you are a 21 year old woman at a 36 week gestation, I check your blood pressure, I find it 190 over 110. I order lab, I find elevated creatinine and transaminase. Okay, so I check the lab again, I find magnesium is 9.2. Okay, after I give you. So you presented, so in a simple way, you presented with a preeclampsia, I gave you magnesium. Mm -hmm. And uh, the magnesium was so high. So mm -hmm. what's, what's going on? Why it was so high? Oh, because of the, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Um, renal disease. Uh, excellent, excellent. To, renal, yeah. renal insufficiency. So, what are the clinical features of magnesium toxicity? Of, yeah, if it's mild. Okay, if it's mild. Yeah. Um, man. Okay, if it's mild, maybe they will have a like um, will I say <laughs> nausea? They will have a I don't know. Yeah. When yeah. they start having like a hyporeflexia, is it severe? Yeah, it's a smile. They have nausea, flushing, headache, hyporeflexia. Mm -hmm. But what if, if there is reflexia, hypocalcemia, and somnolence? What is that? That's a moderate toxic. Yeah. Oh, is it moderate? moderate? Okay. Yeah, but I want to tell you, respiratory paralysis and cardiac arrest, that's a severe. So mm -hmm. how do you manage magnesium toxicity? Um. So you give them, uh, what do you give? Calcium gluconate? Yeah, you stop magnesium first, and then you give them mm -hmm. IV calcium gluconate. Okay. You said that moderate is what? Huh? 
moderate symptoms. Yeah, they have areflexia. Areflexia, okay. That's it. Okay, so if you are a 29-year-old woman, okay, who presented with nausea, lower abdominal pain, and vaginal spotting for the past few hours, your last menstrual period was eight weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Now, when I examine you, I find blood pressure 90 over 60, mm -hmm. and with diffuse lower abdominal pain, on palpation with rebound tenderness and voluntary guarding. Mm -hmm. Cervical motion tenderness is positive and right at nexal tenderness. What do you think is going on? Okay, last pregnancy test uh, was eight weeks. I'm thinking a ectopic. Uh, unstable. Uh, excellent, yeah, it's ectopic oh. and ruptured, yeah. So um, unstable, then you have to go to surgery. Laprotomy. Yeah, so this ectopic pregnancy risk factor, previous ectopic, previous mm -hmm. pelvic tubal surgery, pelvic inflammatory bowel disease. Features, abdominal pain, amenorrhea, vaginal bleeding, hypovolemic shock, and ruptured ectopic pregnancy. And you have, you do cervical motion at nexal, abdominal tenderness, you'll find it, palpable at nexal mass, that's it. How do you diagnose it? Transvaginal ultrasound, you saw at nexal mass with empty uterus. Okay, and positive okay. HCG. How do you manage it? If it's stable, you give it a methotrexate. Methotrexate. Mm -hmm. Unstable. Lab. Yeah, open up, open up surgery. <coughs> so, if I tell you on ultrasound, I found multilocular cystic appearance, and uh, the ovary is multilocular. Okay, and the pelvic ultrasound shows central. Heterogeneous mass with a numerous cyst spaces with no fetal pole. What do you think is going on? Uh, mole. High, high additive high form mole. Yeah, excellent. This is molar pregnancy. So the features of a molar pregnancy present with abnormal bleeding, passing of hydropic tissue, uterine enlargement, more than gestational age, fecal lutein ovarian cyst, hyperemesis gravidarum, and abnormally high beta HCG for level for gestational age and hyperthyroidism. How do you diagnose it? You do ultrasound and ser serum beta HCG. How do you manage it then? Uh, suction and curettage. Yes, dilation and suction curettage is top pathology confirmation mm -hmm. of the mole. And mm -hmm. serial serum beta HCG, uh, HCG. Uh, okay. post evacuation. Until it becomes zero. Mm -hmm. And contraception. <clears throat> okay, so if your cervix is shorter than normal, what should I do for you? Cervix is shorter than normal. Mm -hmm. Um, pregnant. Um, yeah, we so I think, I think, are you saying somebody that is pregnant or just? So I'm saying, what is the gold standard for cervical insufficiency? Test. Progesterone. Oh, the test? Yeah. Cervical insufficiency, are you talking about, okay, the yeah. kind of treatment it's a, it's you would a, give? No, no, the, the test, the, it's transvaginal ultrasound. When you see cervical, oh. when you see cervical length below the 10th percentile for gestational age, it's considered short cervix. Okay. And this includes cervices less than 25 mm at gestational age 23 to 28. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's a concern, short service. Okay. So if you have a variable deceleration consistent, what should I, how should I, how can I treat you with it? So variable deceleration, I'm thinking maybe a uh, like fetal cord compression. So it has to be managed with a C section. No, so this right. so this is, is so this is this is the variable deceleration. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be uh, like intermittent, less than fifty percent of contraction, common. So just reassure. But if it's persistent, more than fifty percent, then require treatment. What's the treatment? You give oxygen first, maternal repositioning, fluid. Okay, say it one more time. You said less than fifty. 
Yeah, if, if it's persistent. If, okay, if it's less than 50, that's normal. That's okay, I'm yeah, sure. But if it's more than 50, then first you'd give oxygen, maternal repositioning, and fluid. Oh, okay. That's if that didn't work, then you give amino and fusion. Maternal reposition. Yeah. Fluid. If not working. Yeah. yeah. Then amino infusion. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Okay, so if you are a 38 year old woman and uh, I do ultrasound okay you are a third week station I do ultrasound I found dead dead baby what should mm -hmm. I do for you if you're more than 20 weeks uh, yeah. yeah so <clears throat> you don't do c-section you encourage the mother to have a um, by uh, induction vaginal delivery Right. You also check to see if they have like a DIC symptoms, D DIC. Yeah. If right. It's, if it's more than so, more than twenty four, if it's mm -hmm. the second trimester, mm -hmm. and more than twenty four, then I do induction of labor, spontaneous vaginal delivery. But if it's less than twenty four, then you do dilation and curettage. Right. Yeah. So how about if it's third trimester? What do you do? Thero demise. Yeah, yeah, also induction and level. Yeah, induction, and you can give cervical ripening agents, and you wait for spontaneous vaginal delivery, and you repeat C-section upon maternal request if the patient has history of prior C, -C, -C delivery. Okay, one second. Let's 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 go through that again. So, fourth trimester, dilation on uh, DNC. Second trimester, induction by label, right? Yeah. Then third trimester. Same. Okay. Induction. Okay, so if you are a 34-year-old woman, when I examine you, I found a smooth, round, pale mass protruding from your vagina. What do you think is going on with you? 34-year-old woman. Yeah. With pale... Sorry, say it one more time. <clears throat> uh, so this this also causes severe abdominal pain, shortness of breath, copious vaginal bleeding, can cause blood pressure to be 70 over 40, pulses low. So this the smooth round pale mass over the vagina is most likely a uterine inversion. Oh, but you're not saying if the person is uh, pregnant or what? You just said a 34-year-old woman. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, yes, it doesn't have to be pregnant. This is an inversion, so it can happen to somebody that is not pregnant. Yeah, it's mostly happened to uh, what would be the risk just... factor for that? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question. Like for someone who just had a delivery of a microsomic baby, mm -hmm. okay, like this uh, girl, like she had a delivery of a nine pound baby. Okay, and the placenta did not deliver after 20 minutes, so they did an excessive traction of the umbilical cord. That yeah, cause... I think more, more history will help to answer that question. Yeah, yeah, it's a tough question. Yeah. I was like 34, like <laughs> a regular somebody or what is going on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that's... Okay, so if, if you are a 28-year-old woman at the 30... Seven week gestation. Okay, when I examine you, I found palpable irregular protuberance in the lower abdomen and moderate vaginal bleeding. Okay, and a bulging back palpated at the cervical os. What do you think is going on with you? Yeah, it can be the um, what do you call it? Uterine inversion. Uh, so this one, when, he's, when I tell you irregular protuberance in the lower abdomen uh, with hemodynamic instability and she had history of prior C-section, this is uterine oh, rupture. Oh, okay. Yeah, uterine rupture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what are the risk factors for uterine rupture? You see delivery, myomectomy, induction of labor, mm -hmm. prolonged labor, 
congenital mm -hmm. uterine anomalies, fetal macrosomia, those are the... How does that present uterine rupture? Present with vaginal bleeding, intra-abdominal bleeding, hypotension, tachycardia, fetal heart deceleration, fetal distress, loss of fetal station, palpation of fetal part on abdominal exam, and loss of intrauterine pressure. Okay, and so that's the presentation of uterine rupture. Okay. So, how do you manage pulmonary edema in a preeclampsic? Pulmonary edema in yeah, a pre... Yeah, in a preeclampsia. Um, is it not delivery? I don't know. Yeah, you, first you give oxygen fluid restriction diuresis. Okay. And the fluid restriction should be used in caution. Is that first you do what? You give oxygen, fluid, mm -hmm. and diuresis. Okay, that's... Before you deliver? Yeah, yeah. And fluid restriction should be careful with that because she's in hemodynamic status. Uh, mm -hmm. She could be depleted. She could be hemodynamic status. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you are a 37-year-old woman at 16-week gestation, your beta-HCG and the inhibin A increased and the uh, estriol and alpha fetoprotein decrease. What do you think is going on here? What increased and what decreased? The inhibin and beta HCG increased. And oh, alpha Down syndrome. Yeah. How about Edward? How's that present? All down. <laughs> yeah, how about Pato? Pat Pato syndrome? Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that one I don't really pay attention. Will it be... How about a neural tube defect? Oh, neural tube defect. Uh, yeah, the AFP. Or is it in PATA or just... Neural um, defect will be... Are you talking about where it will be elevated or just mm -hmm. in PATA syndrome? No, no, not where it should be elevated. Yeah, only alpha fetal protein will be elevated in neural tube defect. <clears throat> uh, like. Uh, oh, okay, okay, okay. I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. What I was saying is, were you asking me conditions where the AFP will be elevated? Or just, okay. Yeah, it will be elevated in neural tube defect. It will also be elevated in multiple gestation. Um. Uh, what do you call it? Omphalocele gastro 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 whatever, however you pronounce that thing. Gastro kisses, yeah. Yeah. So if you are a 35 year old woman who present mm -hmm. with the two pregnancy losses, what do you think is going on with you? Two pregnancy losses, uh, maybe uh, what do you call it? Um, premature loss of um, pregnancy um what do you call it um cervical insufficiency i don't know so this most likely could be hypercoagulability can cause oh, okay recurrent like pregnancy losses like yeah, so this, yeah, antiphosphorylated. How do you diagnose it? They have do, vascular, uh, huh? Yeah, they have. Yeah, yeah. How do you diagnose it? Antiphospholipid. Yeah. Okay, so, so you do. You can do this test. What do you call it? Check for lupus anticoagulant. Yeah. So this is the criteria: yeah. vascular okay. thrombosis, transient ischemic attack, stroke, DVT. Plus or pregnancy complication, recurrent miscarriages, plus one of the following, more than one of the following, which mm -hmm. is anticardiolipin antibody, lupus anticoagulant, mm -hmm. and anti beta 2 glycoprotein antibody. Anti beta 2. Yeah. How do you manage it? Heparin and what? Uh, you do heparin. 
and then you can do aspirin to prevent Whoa. thrombosis. Yeah, warfarin, warfarin, you give him. Hmm? Warfarin. You can give him warfarin. Heparin and warfarin. When do you do warfarin? When do you do heparin? When do you do aspirin? Yeah, you start off with heparin and then you continue with warfarin. You bridge it to warfarin. Okay. There was something that I just read um, last night about uh, giving them aspirin for prophylaxis to prevent um, thrombosis. Maybe that if they did not develop thrombosis yet or yeah, something like that. No, to prevent prophylaxis for thrombosis. Yeah, yeah, you're right, yeah. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Yeah, I just saw it on yeah. UWOD 3. Yeah. You you study for UWOD Step 3 too? <laughs> Hmm? I'm doing um, what do you call it? I'm just doing a OB gain for you or three because you know I'm not really very strong in OB gain. Oh, I see, I see. So I want to do step three, you world. Okay, so let's so let's see. Okay, so if you are a 36 year old woman who presents with sudden vaginal bleeding and severe lower abdominal pain. And you have contraction every two minutes that lasts for 20 seconds. How many weeks gestation? You didn't say. 38 you weeks. Said yeah, you have at, uh, at a 30 week, 38 week gestation. Uh -huh. You have sudden abdominal pain with vaginal bleeding. Mm -hmm. So what, what's the complication of that condition? Okay. Just if you don't mind, repeat the whole thing again because I didn't get the gestation before I asked you and I got distracted. So you said a 37 year old man, 38 weeks gestation, and then yeah. sudden mm -hmm. abdominal pain. Yeah, sudden abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding. This is mm -hmm. most likely a option. So they say, center, yeah. yeah, the complication for that is the DIC can have DIC and hypovolemic okay. shock. Those are the maternal, maternal okay. complication. The fetal complication, hypoxia, preterm delivery. That's the thing. So risk factor for placental abruption, maternal hypertension or preeclampsia, eclampsia. Abdominal trauma, abdominal okay. trauma yeah. prior placental abruption, cocaine, tobacco. How does that present? Sudden abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding. And high frequency, low intensity contraction. And hypertonic, tender uterus. Okay, you uh, said that the complication will be DIC and and the uh, shock. Okay, shock. Okay. Yeah, diagnosis mostly clinical, and you can use ultrasound, but not required for diagnosis. Just to rule out placenta previa, may show mm -hmm. retro placental hematoma. That's all. Okay. Okay. So how do you manage hypertension, proteinuria in a pregnancy? Hypertension and proteinuria in pregnancy. Okay, I guess it depends on the. Uh, okay, what is going on? If it's um, like a, okay, let's say. You say hypertension and uh, proteinuria. So hypertension, if it's um, like a 140 over 90, and they have like almost like two plus uh, protein in their urine, it might be like a just regular preeclampsia. I don't know if that's what you're asking. Then if they have like a hypertension 160 over 110, that might be like a, a preeclampsia with severe um, severe features. So, yeah, excellent. So, if you have a new onset hypertension more than 140 at mm -hmm. more than 20 weeks gestation with a proteinuria or sign of end organ damage, this is preeclampsia. And you may have severe features, which is blood pressure more than 160, systolic or more than 110 diastolic on two occasions, more than four hours apart, mm -hmm. and um, thrombocytopenia, platelet less than 100, creatinine more than 1.1. Elevated transaminase, pulmonary edema, a new onset visual, or cerebral symptoms. Okay, so how do you manage that? You delivery for term patient, and patient with severe features, you give seizure prophylaxis, magnesium, IV, or IM, and antihypertensive medication for blood pressure more than 160. 
which is labetalol IV, hydralazine IV, and nifedipine PO. Okay? All right. Got it. Okay, so, so you want me to say all that to you? Yeah, mostly magnesium and hydralazine. That's what I the most important thing. Yeah, if you just want to remember it like in two words, that's it. Okay, so now, okay, you, if you are a healthy 22 year old woman at 28 week gestation, okay. I check your antibody negative on the blood type negative. What should I do for you on your RH negative? Okay, you're 22 and you are at how many weeks gestation? 28. Okay, yeah. So for RH negative mother at 28, you can give the uh, rogam. Rogam, um, yeah, yeah, excellent. If the, yeah. the uh, titer is negative, yeah, yeah. So, so the indication for a prophylactic anti D immunoglobulin administration for an sensitized RH negative pregnant patient at 28 to 32 week gestation, we do mm -hmm. within 72 hour of delivery of an RH positive within infant hours, yeah. for spontaneous, threatened, or induced abortion. For ectopic pregnancy, hydrotiform mole pregnancy, for chorionic villa sampling, amniocentesis, abdominal trauma, second mm -hmm. and third trimester bleeding, external cephalic version, all of these conditions you give entity immunoglobulin. Okay, and the prophylaxis you don't need to give it if the father is negative too. Okay. So if you are a 32 year old woman at a 35 gestation and you find repetitive late deceleration on fetal heart monitoring, what should I do for you? Repetitive deceleration, yeah. late, late deceleration. Yeah. Yeah, for late deceleration, um, yeah, how many weeks? So that's what I want you. Whenever you hear the word repetitive late deceleration, C-section, mm -hmm. that's it, period. You don't need any other information. That means it's placental insufficiency. Mm -hmm. So just C-section, that's it. Okay. Repetitive late deceleration, C-section, okay. Yeah. No, you don't. So if you're a 30-year-old woman at the 36-week gestation who have low back pain, what do you think is causing that? Um, low back pain. It might be um, either the person is having a... Um, um, it might be contraction, but it depends, you know. Yeah. It, you know, in a pregnancy, the progesterone causes relaxation of the ligament supporting joint of the pelvic girdle. So due mm -hmm. to increased lumbar load doses, that's why why they have low back mm -hmm. pain. I can be normal. You know, it's yeah. very tough. Like this delivery and pregnancy process, like it's very hard. You know, you. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't like it. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, it's very tough. You know, like I wouldn't be able to do it. Like you know, like this. <laughs> you're stronger. <laughs> you are so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, You'll girls are stronger, stronger than guys. You know, <laughs> can tolerate all of that. How was it? Was it hard, right? Like it's tough, and it is, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you know, the kids like the, and then by the end, the kids like they're, the, maybe they don't appreciate it and stuff like that, right? They don't know. Maybe they they start yelling at you and everything. I know. Right? Oh no, my 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 kids don't you don't yell at mommy. No way. <laughs> no, they don't yell. <laughs> <laughs> you don't earn the right to yell at mommy or daddy. <laughs> yeah. Does it worth it? What does it worth it? Do you think? What do you think? Oh, having having them or what? Yeah, having them like. It it depends. To me, it's, it's a blessing. It's like the the best achievement or whatever that you can do in this world. You know, regardless of whatever else that you have, because at the end of the day, you have your children. You know. 
you you know that these are these are yours. You don't really. It doesn't matter how much how how successful you are in life. I believe that with your children by your side, you know that you, you have to be you have to be content. Because one thing that helps me, that keeps me going with this uh, uh, medical school and studying for this is, you know, when you come back, my children are there, you know, uh, I forget about the stress of the medical school and all those things, you know, they are there, they talk to you, you talk to them, you love them, you say no matter what, you know, these are yours, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, yeah. that's sweet, yeah, that's so sweet. That's the way I see it, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. that's very sweet. Yeah. yeah, that's sweet. Because sometimes I don't know about your culture, but here, you know, you can be successful all you want to be. At the end of the day, if you don't have anybody, then you are really. <laughs> I have a somebody that was telling me about a judge. Is a judge, you know, like an attorney, a judge, yeah. that uh, she was one of the most powerful judges in Dallas. But where where is she now? She's in a nursing home. She doesn't have anybody to come, you know, look for her. She doesn't have anybody to visit her. She didn't have any children, you know. Wow. Her husband is dead. I'm like. Wow. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is life. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, That's a very nice it. story. That must yeah. be very depressing. Yeah, yeah. That must be very depressing. Yeah. After all the things that you did in this world, nobody even remembers to come and visit yeah. you at the nursing home. Yeah. That's you crazy. Know? Yeah. Yeah. They say, they say treat your kids very well because so that they pick a good nursing home for you. And I'm not going to nursing home. <laughs> 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 I'll be in my home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's sweet. No, I'm joking with you. Yeah. yeah. No, for real. If you have good relationship with your kids, you know, then you are really gonna be very like you know happy in this world. But if the point is when you have them and you don't have good relationship with them and they get up and leave, you know. Yeah, absolutely right. Yeah, totally mm. right. You're right. Yeah. I always tell my kid, you have to keep telling them, you know, remember mommy and daddy, mommy and daddy, you know, they are doing this for you and that and that. You have to keep ringing it in their ears, you know, for them to know that, hey, we need to take care of mommy and daddy or we need to at least be close to your parents, you know? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you can have a... Uh, 10 kids and none of them is close to you none of them looks for you they don't call you to me it's a waste of uh, <laughs> uh -huh. it's a waste of time yeah but you know when you have your kids and you treat them well and you have good relationship with them you'll be happy that's... even if you don't have any other thing in this world you don't have to have money you'll be happy that's true yeah you're absolutely right yeah, I agree with yeah. you yeah okay, okay so if you are a 30 year old woman at a third week gestation mm -hmm. when I do ultrasound I find fetal per biparietal diameter abdominal circumference and fetal weight all of them less than 10th percentile mm -hmm. what do you think is causing that so this will be uh, symmetric so if it's symmetric it might be due to chromosomal abnormalities or due to touch infections yeah, excellent. Could be due genetic aneuploidy, congenital heart disease, or intrauterine infection, malaria, cytomegalovirus, rubella. But mm -hmm. if it's asymmetric, then the cause will be different. Could be hypertension, preeclampsia, diabetes, antiphospholipid, yeah. SLE, mm -hmm. cyanotic heart disease, and uh, substance abuse, tobacco, alcohol, cocaine, all cause uh, asymmetric. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so that's the... Okay, so after giving... Uh, so someone with chorioaminunitis... Okay, you... After giving the broad-spectrum antibiotic, what do you give? Somebody with chorioaminunitis, uh, you do the... Um... Are you talking about giving them something to cover for group B strep? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is... Penicillin? The, yeah, so the treatment for chorium unite is two things. Number one, broad-spectrum antibiotic. Second thing, mm -hmm. delivery. Just deliver the baby. So what are oh, the okay. risk factors for chorium unite? It's, it's a prolonged rupture of membrane, mm -hmm. prolonged labor, mm -hmm. and the internal fetal or uterine monitoring devices. Mm -hmm. Presence of genital tract pathogen. That's going to host that. 
So how do you diagnose chorioaminunitis? So they will have like a fever. Yeah, right. yeah, fever more than mm -hmm. one hundred point four, right, or more than thirty-eight Celsius, and mm -hmm. more than one of the following, which is maternal tachycardia more than hundred, uterine mm -hmm. tenderness, mm -hmm. malodorous, purulent amniotic fluid or vaginal discharge, mm -hmm. white blood cells more than fifteen thousand, mm -hmm. and fetal tachycardia more than one sixty. Okay. Okay. So there's question. A the broad antibiotics, uh, which one specifically? So I, I, I know think they you said get ampicillin, ampicillin, gentamicin, clindamicin, mm -hmm. that's, that's enough. Okay. Um, okay. <clears throat> Yeah, and the complication, the maternal, uterine atony, postpartum hemorrhage, endometritis, and the neonatal complication, premature birth, infection, encephalopathy, and cerebral palsy, and death. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so if you are a 23-year-old woman who come with a one-day history of abdominal pain, persistent wetness in your underwear. And uh, I find in the cervix that it's 2 cm dilated and nitrazine positive clear fluid pulling from the vagina. Okay, tocometry shows urine irritability and contraction every 10 minutes. Leukocytes 18,000. What do you think is going on? What's, what's, what, what's going on? What diagnosis? How many weeks? 39 weeks. 39 weeks, okay. So 39 weeks. Um, so, yeah, patient is in labor. Yeah, so this one you have uh, nitrazine positive, clear fluid, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and fever, and uh, irritability contraction, and oh, leukocytosis. Yeah, this is intraamniotic infection. Right, yeah. Okay, so if you are a 22 period, like, so now, now a second. If you are a 22 year old, year old woman at 13 week gestation, you came to the ER for vaginal discharge and lower abdominal discomfort. I examined you and I found closed cervix, slightly tender uterus, with a size consistent of gestational with age, and free adnexia and scant bright vaginal bleeding from the introsius. Okay. What do you think is going on? The ultrasound shows normal fetal heart motion, and but the patient is anxious, concerned about the baby. So what do you think is going on? So remember, vaginal bleeding, closed cervix. Mm -hmm. What is that? Vaginal bleeding, closed cervix, um, threatened. Excellent, perfect. This is a threat. And you you have really good knowledge. I think you're gonna do really good on the exam. <laughs> yeah. I'm praying for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you will. I'm sure. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you are a 27 year old woman at 28 week gestation. Okay, the, and you did not feel fetal movement, and fetal heart tone. So you did Doppler. Uh, fetal heart. Uh, the, you did not hear fetal heart by Doppler. So what do you think? What you should you do right now? Okay, so if you don't hear it, then you should do um, what do you call it? Um, stress test. If you do not hear it on ultra Doppler, yeah, you do. Oh, okay, sorry, you do ultrasound first. Yeah, yeah, real time ultrasound. Yes, ultrasound. Mm -hmm. Because this is ultrasound. serious, could be fetal demise, you know. Right, ultrasound, yeah. Okay, so if you are 24 week gestation mm -hmm. who present with the. Uh, with the ultrasound shows absence of fetal cardiac activity. How should I treat you? 
Induction of labor, we talked about that. It's just fetal mm -hmm. demise, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're a 24, you... Uh, but when you say um, fetal um, heart tone, so you do ultrasound, right? And when you do ultrasound, and it's fetal demise. That's when you confirm that it's fetal demise right. by doing ultrasound. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay, job. all right. So, 24-year-old woman having abortion and she's RH negative, what should you do right now? Uh, give a uh, ruga. Yeah, MTD immunoglobin, perfect. Okay, so if you are a 37-year-old woman and you're going through delivery, through delivery, umbilical cord avulses during placental delivery and placenta is removed in pieces, what do you think is going on here? Um, placenta is removing pieces. You're going through delivery. Yeah. You say what is going on? Yeah. yeah. Um, I don't know what I will say. What is going on? Yeah. This is placenta. Placenta accurata. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, when I say the placenta accurata, yes, yes, that's what it is. Okay. So what uh, microbes causing endometritis? What? What uh, bacteria causing endometritis? Poly, poly, polymicrobial, Ex anaerobes. Excellent, yeah, yeah. Poly, mm -hmm. polymicrobial, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so if you are, <clears throat> if the biophysical profile less than four, what what does that indicate? Um, if it's less than four, then there is a, a problem. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is placental dysfunction. How do they, they mention it in the question? Like, so amniotic fluid index, they tell you of 1.5 with a single fluid pocket measuring 1.5 by 1 cm and mm -hmm. over a period of 45. There's four episodes of fetal movement, mm -hmm. three flexion extension, no mm -hmm. fetal uh, breathing movement. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this if you calculated the and NST, NST non-reactive, so NST non-reactive mm -hmm. that's zero, amniotic fluid index decrease that's zero, movement and tone that you give two each, and breath, no breath movement, so zero. Mm -hmm. So two plus two, this is four. So if it's less than four, this is placenta insufficiency mm -hmm. okay that's what it means okay so if you are a 19 year old woman who who have a chlamydia infection but negative gonorrhea how should i treat you just azithromycin or dust cycling excellent excellent just azithromycin perfect Okay, so if you're a 22-year-old woman with a green malodorous vaginal discharge with vulvar and vaginal erythema, mm -hmm. yeah, how should, what is that? So that might be uh, chlamydia and uh, or nice uh, nyseria gonorrhea, GC chlamydia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if if it's thin, frothy, and green malodorous vaginal discharge, it's most likely metron. Uh, oh, frothy trichomonas. Frothy trichomonas. Yeah, yeah. yeah. trichomonas and velvopyritis. Okay. Yeah. Green frothy. Yeah. yeah. Trichomonas. Yeah. Th thin green mothers, frothy vaginal discharge. pH more than 7.5. Motile mm -hmm. trichomonas. You treat metronidazole, hair on her partner. How about uh, the, if I tell you thick cottage cheese, vaginal inflammation, candida. pH less than 4.5, pseudohyphae, fluconazole. Yeah. Candida. How about if it's thin of white discharge with fishy odor, pH more than four, clue cell, positive mm -hmm. wolf cell, mm -hmm. amine color. Gadnella, vaginosis. Yeah, metronidazole or clandamycin. That's mm -hmm. what Yeah. So if if you are a 31 year old woman, okay, and when I examine you, I found group tender, shallow labial ulcers. With an iguinal lymph nodes. What do you think is going on? Yeah, shallow will be HSV. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. So those are when you when I tell you when we talk about gentle ulcers, mm -hmm. there are two types. There are painful and painless. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hemophilus. If, yeah, if it's painful, grouped ulcer with erythematous base, shallow, tender lymph node, most common in the United States, and recurrence is common, that's a herpes. But if mm -hmm. I tell you, what is that? If I tell you single or multiple mm -hmm. deep ulcers, often with deep. irregular ragged borders, yeah, base may be friable and have gray-yellow exudate and matted lymph node, can be super, separate and rupture. What do you think is mm -hmm. that? Uh, H. Ducre. Yeah, hemophilus ducri chancroid. How about the painless ulcer? If, it's, if I tell you, single, indurated, well circumscribed, painless mm -hmm. ulcer, clean base, and non tender lymph node. What is that? Um, so, pain, painless ulcer can be either um, syphilis or it can be what do you call it? Lympho, lymphogranuloma. Yeah, so this description is for syphilis. How about if okay. I tell you another ulcer, which is a small, shallow ulcer, okay, with matted lymph node and large, painful, fluctuant boo-boos on sinus tract. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is that? So that would be the lymphogranulo, uh, what do you call it, inguinally, something, yeah, something. Chlamydia trachomatis, serum, mm -hmm. <laughs> serovar, L1 to L5, yeah, lymphogranuloma venerium. So how about if I tell you there's extensive progressive nodules that turn to ulcers, beefy appearing lesion with a bleeding. Base may have granulation-like tissue. What is that? Oh, what is the other one? I know it, but I don't remember the name. It's not coming to my head. It's Klebsiella granulomatosis. Yes, granulomatosis. yes, that's the one. Describe it again for me, please. It's extensive and progressive, like nodules that turn to ulcers, beefy appearing lesion with bleeding. Beefy appearance lesion. Yeah. And the base may have granulation-like tissue. Okay. Clefsella. Okay. Okay. So if you are a 25-year-old woman uh, who is present with a numerous epithelial cell coated with bacteria, on what mount? Well, how should I treat you? Two cells. Yeah, I just give a metronid as well. So if you're an 18 year old girl with a, uh, you have gram stain discharge shows a numerous polymorphonuclear leukocyte filled with gram negative diplococci. How should I treat you? Oh, that's gonorrhea. So you should give both azithromycin and um, ceftriazone. Yes, yeah, azithromycin. Yeah, purulent mucopurulent discharge, friable cervix with easy bleeding, intermenstrual or postcoital bleeding. Diagnosis is nucleic acid amplification testing. Treatment, yeah, ceftriaxone, azithromycin plus doxycycline, mm -hmm. or, or azithromycin or doxycycline. Okay, so if you are a twenty-seven-year-old woman with right lower quadrant pain and fever and there is moderate tenderness when I palpate the right lower quadrant leukocyte 16,000 what should I do next? what do you think? so I'm thinking maybe this is appendicitis and it's clinical so you don't have to go and do uh, imaging just go straight to OA Laparotomy is that is that the one? But you you know this this patient is nineteen week gestation, is that gonna make any difference? Nineteen weeks gestation. Mm. Yeah, they said if uh, pregnant you can also yeah go ahead and do. Right. So you do ultrasound with a graded compression technique. Or before you go to the OR. Yeah. For pregnancy. Yeah. If the ultrasound okay. non diagnostic, you do MRI. Okay, hold on. So, pregnant and um, suspicion of uh, appendicitis. So, you don't go straight to the OR. You do ultrasound. Is yeah. That what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then if 
non what do you call it you do MRI yeah yeah you're right before you take the patient to the OR yeah exactly hmm. yeah, just confirm it because in pregnancy it can be any other things yeah so that's just okay. okay so what are the greatest risk factor for breast cancer <sighs> the breast age. cancer mm -hmm. there are, there are mod <laughs> yeah huh yeah, there are modifiable risk factors like hormone <coughs> pregnancy replacement therapy, null parity, increased age at first live birth, alcohol consumption, and there's non modifiable like genetic or breast cancer in first degree relative, white race, increasing age, early menarche or later menopause. Okay. All of those mm -hmm. increase risk factor for breast cancer. Okay. Yeah. And that's the end of the first session.